Hey guys, my name is Jochen aka Leo Demers and welcome to episode 2 of my FM21 class, this time concerning scouting. The first episode about training is by far the most popular video on my entire channel, so I can't thank you enough for that support. How awesome would it be if we can beat that in today's episode though? So if you like at any point what you see in this video, Feel free to hit the thumbs up button and if this is the kind of content you are looking for, feel free to subscribe to my channel, whack on that good old notification button and you won't miss a single thing. In today's video I will show you three things and that is general scouting, scouting of free agents or released players and of course how to find the occasional wonder kid. Without further ado, let's go. Let's start our journey in the Scouting Center. So I just went to the Scouting tab page. This is the Scouting Center. Let's start with the knowledge because this is important to know that this scouting knowledge, so it's basically how much do you know about all the players in the entire world, comes from different sources. Because this club, Gangzhou, is an, an affiliate club of ours, we have 100% knowledge of players in China which is awesome if you want to use that. Because we are Stuttgart, we have a 90% knowledge of Austria and a 90% knowledge of Switzerland. You can go on, but just know that, for example, I hired Ivan Cordoba as a coach. You all know him from Inter Milan, right? I hired him as a coach. At least I think he is a coach, yes. Because of that simple fact, we now have 100% knowledge of players in Colombia because he's Colombian, of course. Now you can also flip that around and say, okay, in Argentina, I only have 1% knowledge for some reason from Eric Larson, and I want that to be a lot more. So what you can do, and I have a vacant scout position at the moment, I could go to my staff tab, to my staff search, uh, look for a scout, recruitment team, scout with a nationality of Argentinian, for example, or, and this is maybe a tip that you might not always think about, or a, uh, what is it, second nationality, couldn't really find it, of Argentinian, boom, set this to or, go. So these guys, if I hire them, I guarantee you, because you can click on them and have a look, they have a, or most of them will have a 100% knowledge of Argentina. So it is that simple. If you hire this guy, you will have a 100% knowledge of Argentinian players. Since we are at this screen, real quick, a very, very important attribute to look for when hiring a new scout is adaptability. I mean, obviously judging player ability and potential are very important, duh. But adaptability is also quite important because at a certain point in time you will probably send this scout over to a nation or a region that is new for him as well. And the higher at that point his adaptability is, the quicker results will come in and the better his scout reports will be. It is as simple as that. When it comes to scouting, you have to consider two budgets. First of all, the more logical one, scouting budget, is right up here. And this is pretty straightforward because, like it says here, the scouting budget will be used to pay for senior youth packages and any individual scouting trips outside of your permitted scouting range. This is kind of a extra budget, if you will, because the main budget, and this is for some reason more hidden, I think, than the scouting budget we just saw, is on the players tab here because that is the recruitment package. And this one, for example, I now have the European package, which basically means it covers all players in the U European continent. If you want the world package, it is the best package available. It covers all the players in the world. Pretty straightforward. Now. Like it says here, recruitment analysts will also use these packages to suggest potential signings. So this is kind of a filter, if you will, if you are, are managing a club and you don't have a lot of money. I totally understand that you don't have, like me, 
the European package or, or even the Bundesliga package if you are low, managing a really low club in Germany. But I mean, this is a starting point. If you have the world package, you will in your player search screen see every player in the world. It is as simple as that. Now the general scouting, you can tackle in a couple of ways. The way I normally do it, but it is totally up to you, don't get me wrong, but the way I like to do it is this. I leave it to my, if you click scouting responsibility, I leave it to my director of football or even my chief scout, which maybe would even make more sense, but again, you can choose that, uh, to do the assignments of the scouts. And the chief scout will also provide me with scout feedback on those very assignments. I will handle the scouting meetings myself because, of course, okay, I'm not doing my own assignments all the time, but I do want to see the results. So if an interesting scouting report comes in, I do want to see it and I do want to decide what to do with it. But by doing it like this, if we go to the assignments tab, you can see that pretty much always someone, and in my case, I tend to notice that it is always the chief scout that is doing this. Someone is always ongoing checking the next deposition, as is a performance analyst also analyzing the next deposition. And it is ongoing, like I mentioned. So it will be the same thing for every opponent. You will get a report. That is because it is set up like this. The other guys also have an ongoing assignment and basically it says nothing here except for general focus. What the hell is that? Well, if you go to here, general all, you can see that right now I don't really have anything set up or I do have something set up, but nothing specifically because right now my focus is based on a tactic. Um, and I'm not even sure if I set this up myself or that he alternates between tactics automatically. I can't promise you that. What I can promise you is that I have now set this up like this. Players in the age range 15 to 40, which is basically everyone. Availability, typically. So that is also normal. He will just give me scouting reports, not necessarily of players who are out of contract or who will be available in six months or whatever. He doesn't filter at all on that. So this is a very generic focus that I have. For the love of God, don't do it like this. Because there will probably always be at least one position that you want to strengthen. So you can go into this focus screen, choose a tactic. It doesn't really ma matter that much because it is really position dependent what you're going to do next. Let's say we want a new central midfielder and we want him to be well suited for the role of a ball winning midfielder. Let's just choose one. Player style, physical, current ability. If I am looking, let's say I'm looking for a new first team player. I probably want this to be at least three and a half, four stars maybe. Potential ability, this could go up to five, but it doesn't really matter. Availability, do I want him right now or do I just want a scouting report and I'll see what I'll do with it? Maybe it's someone to sign in the next transfer window or whatever. You get the picture. Players in the age range, well, let's say a maximum of 29. Doesn't really matter that much. You get what you can choose here. And then the duration, it kind of depends probably what time of year it is. If it is like... Uh, I don't know, October and transfer window is long gone and the next transfer window is in January, you might as well go for three months, right? Priority, you can pretty much set this to whatever you want depending on how urgent it is. It is as simple as that. You could set an extra filter for the analysts to look for. For example, if I'm looking for a ball winning midfielder, I could go, for example, Tackles per 90 minutes and then you will get the extra data in your scouting reports and they will in fact implement the data within the report so that you can see, because you have chosen it here, what his tackling is like. Now if I choose set focus, you can immediately see that one of those guys who had the ongoing assignment on the general focus has changed. So this guy for the next three months 
is going to apply that assignment that I have just, well, that focus to his assignment that I have just set up. And this is how you can pretty much give everyone an assignment with still having this responsibility not being your own, if that makes any sense. Now, if you for some reason want to do the whole assignment thing yourself, well, no problem, go to scouting responsibility, take control, and then have a look at the assignments. Boom. And as you can see, now there's a new button here, create new assignment, and there you can go as detailed as you want. You can even scout a certain team. You can sc scout a certain match. I mean, you can do whatever you want here, but know that this requires some maintenance because if you don't do anything, you can choose, for example, duration ongoing for a target man. And even if you have signed a target man and you don't stop it manually, this assignment will go on and on. Just realize that it is a very nice thing to do yourself, but it might take some maintenance. And that is why I tend to, as I showed you in the beginning, have most of the things done by my staff because in all honesty, I think this is this is one of those FM functionalities that works pretty well when you let the AI control it. Now, if you are in a dire need for a player, uh, for example, it's the last day of the transfer window, whatever, if you are in a need, go to the transfers tab, director of football, suggest transfer targets, even if it's for a loan, if you don't want to bother to go all through all scouting reports, just find a loan player. I mean, come here, he will suggest some players that are listed for loan, probably, um, in the position that you choose. So, for example, if I say I want a defensive midfielder in an anchorman role, suggest, and he will suggest this guy. If I want a, uh, it is July 1st at this point. So we will have a lot of free transfers available, probably. If I want a new striker, just to have some depth, okay, select the striker, I go for target man, boom, no players have been found, of course. If I go for poacher, also no players have been found, wow. Advance forward then, one guy. As you can see, it is quite limited, and I think it also depends on the quality of your... Um, director of football although mine is pretty good but you get the picture if you are in dire need for players this is also an option second part of the video concerns free transfers or released players i dare to predict that most of you do it like this it is now july 1st we all know on june 30th a lot of contracts run out so, if I go to the player search screen and I look for, come on, and I look for a little filter called contract status is expired, let's go for unattached, shall we? Because then we really know that they're not attached to a club anymore and they are in fact really free agents. There we go, 8,612 players have been found. Now, I don't know if you guys realize this, but the player search screen is directly linked to your recruitment package. Because if we open this again, it literally says the package owned determines the number of players available to search through as well as blah, blah, blah. So this player search screen has a filter on it either way, unless of course you have the world package, then you see everyone. But if you don't have that, you will not see every player here and also not every free agent. Uh-huh. Now, how to solve that? First step, go to shortlist and create a new shortlist called whatever free agents or released players you can choose. Okay, step number two, go to the world icon, go to the world tab, transfers, and by default it says all transfers here, but we don't want that. Go to released players, and this, my friends, is for the year 2023, up until the 1st of July, of course, the one and only complete list of every free agent. 
Of course, since it is July, a lot of these guys will have new clubs by now. I get that. That is why you can probably come here every, like, end of the month, I guess. That's what I do when I need this list. Every end of the month, I come here, I check the list. And what I do, let's just scroll all the way down. Oh, maybe one side note. Also, retired players are in this list. Let me see. Yep, here they are. So a lot of retired players will also be here. Of course, there is no use in scouting them or whatever. You know that, but just stating the obvious. Let's scroll all the way down. I said all the way down. And let's just select the whatever first by holding shift. Even Stuttgart players are in here. You know what? Let's go to them. Bam. 67 people. Add to shortlist. Um, free agents. Indefinitely. Alrighty. Let's go back to the shortlist. And if you do it like that for every month, so if you basically add every free agent to this list, that is the only way to have a complete overview of all the free agents, unless, of course, you have that world package. Now, at this point, you can basically do with this shortlist whatever you want. If you make sure that all those free agents are in here and you go and check them every month, I guarantee you, especially if you are managing a lower leagues and you don't, you literally don't have a package at all, maybe, those released players will always be there in that world list. So you can go there at the end of every month, copy them into a short list, filter them by whatever criteria that you have. And I think you have a pretty good base to sign some decent free agents. And now, of course, le moment suprême of this video, probably, I am going to show you how I tend to find the occasional wonder kid. First of all, there is one way that, I'm, that I never use, but you could do it like this. You could create a new assignment that says, for example, we are implementing an age filter. Age is at most 17, and I want my determination to be higher than what? 13, choose whatever you want. You can also choose other attributes if you want to. You get the picture. A scouting range as a scope is probably the best thing to do here. And that's the same thing with the free agents. If you have a very low tier package or no package at all, you can't even do this, I think, if you have no scouts. But let's say you have a very low package. This will only apply this assignment to the players within that package. So that is why you could do it like this if you have the world package, for example. But I am not sure if it is the most productive way. That is why I'm going to show you this. Because the way I tend to do it is as follows. We create once again, step one, a new shortlist. Um, new shortlist youth intake for example call it what you will it doesn't matter step two go to that same world icon the same world tab and the same transfers tab but now of course we are no longer interested in the released players no sir we want the youth intake just to clarify in my stuttgart save i am not doing the free agent thing that I showed you. I'm not coming here every month or at the end of each month. It is more applicable if you are a lower league team with less money and less scouting budget mainly. So yeah, I'm not doing that with Stuttgart. I am, however, doing this with every single club that I manage. Now, this can only be filtered on Nation. So. It would be awesome if they had implemented a filter here, but maybe then it would all be too easy. So bear with me. For now, just for my example, I am just going to filter. Whoa, no, wait. Let me show you how many players there are. Control A, please. Right click 3901 peeps from January 1st until July 1st in 2023. FYI, before I used this tactic, tactic, this technique myself, I used to go through, and believe it or not, 
every single player in this list manually. And I do mean manually clicking on them, checking out some core attributes, for example, determination, depending on their position, maybe their height, and then scouting them or simply do nothing. I used to do that. I have done that with thousands and thousands of players. So I am quite excited to show you the following because this will, it will still take time. Don't get me wrong, but it will also save you a lot of time. Because for example, let's go to nations and let's only select, I don't know, France, but boom, alrighty. Control A, right click, 142 peeps. Fine with me. Let's add them to the shortlist. Youth intake indefinitely. If we go to that very youth intake, we can see that 142 players have been found. Again, from this point on, you can pretty much do with this shortlist whatever you want, but I'm going to show you how I tend to use it. First of all, it is not always necessary to tick the interested in transfer box because it's not always the case that you want to sign this guy right away. Or maybe you just want to find a lot of good players and have them in a separate shortlist called whatever, transfer targets, I don't know, um, and simply follow up on their progress. In that case, even if he wants to come to you now, it doesn't really matter. So by doing this, you il immediately eliminate, in my case, 14 players. And I am playing with Stuttgart, and we are doing quite well. So probably those... I saw some Paris Saint-Germain guys here. You know what? Let's sort by value. There we go. So probably Geraldes and Konate. Okay, they're gone. So do I want that as a filter? Probably not. But what do we want? As you can see, and you probably have spotted this with the free agents thing uh, a minute ago, I have a view which I found on footballmanagerstory.com. A link is down in the description. And this is quite awesome because we have a couple of things here that are very important when it comes to young talent and even to a wonder kid. For starters, we have the release clauses here. We have the personality. We have determination. Media description, a very important one. I will come back to that in a minute. Uh, and then the standard stuff like position, age, value. But a lot of these things will be only visible, of course, when we scout them. Now, I'm not going to scout everyone in this example. Let's just, um, I don't know, pick the first 50. You can, oh, you can select 50 as a max, by the way, if I go for 48. If I go for more than 50 and I want a scout report, it says more than 50 players selected. So I need to tune it down a notch. There we go. 94 people get a scout report or even assign a scout from which you know that he has a good judging potential ability. Because that is, of course, a very important thing. For this example, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say get scout report. And that is that. And now, my friends, I think we have arrived at something most of you will not know or will not use because if I now do nothing, I will eventually get a scout report for these players. I will get to know them better. More details will show up here, whatever, but that might take a while. I don't want that. So I go to assignments, scout priorities, a baboom. And this is in my case, every single scouting job that has been assigned to my scouts. If I flip this list, I can see that right now we have 141 scouting jobs available. Well, available, planned, scheduled, really. And the last 50 of those, let's see. So we have 141 minus 50. So somewhere around 91, 92. There we go. This guy was the last... Um, scouting job that was already there and everything above him all these guys those are those youth intake players so if i select all of these 48 people i think it was 49 but i'm not sure 
doesn't really matter. The thing is, I know that now. I don't want them to be at the end of that list. What you can do, and the sad, sad thing is, you can only do this one by one. If I select the first one and you click Prioritize Assignment, let's remember the name Fabian Konate. Boom, he's gone here. If I flip the list back around, he is my first priority and within a week, I will already have a first scouting report. I'm gonna do that for all those 50 players or 48 players, whatever. Then I'm gonna fast forward like a week at minimum, but let's just go for two weeks that we have, might have some more information on that. And then we will have a look at that very same shortlist again. So here we are 17 days later and apart from this guy, every single one of those youth intake players has been scouted. Let's have a look at the list, shall we? So as you can see, of course we do have some recommendation numbers for all these players, well for the scouted players at least, uh, but for example also the personality column has been filled out for those players and that one is a very important one. Use the personality as a first major filter because I have signed a guy two years ago, let me show you, Alexandru Niaksu. He still is a five-star potential ability player, which he was back then. He was 15 when I signed him. I found him exactly the way that I'm showing you right now with the whole shortlist uh, thing. I've signed him from Cluj in Romania for 675k, which is nothing for me at Stuttgart and less than nothing if he turned out to be a decent young player. But he sucks. He hasn't progressed in two freaking years because I was blinded by his technique of 18, which is insanely high. Also his leadership 15, decisions 13 for a 15 year old, awesome sauce, but his determination of three and his personality that is unambitious and still is, I didn't see that, or probably I saw that, but I did, wasn't paying attention, it didn't register. Don't do it, because he could be a 75 star potential ability guy if he has a personality like this and a determination of three, that doesn't matter. They will not progress and it is pointless paying any money for this type of player. So guys, I will put the same link in the description as I did in the training video. Um, it is a link to a website that will explain you everything about personalities, the good ones, the bad ones, what they mean. Check it out and for the love of God, again, use it. Now let's look at our list. We have on top two prospects from SM Khan. I think they are a, yep, a second league team in France. Um, let's just have a look. Thomas Barber or Barbet since he's French. Now we've only scouted them for one week each. Um, so we don't have a lot of information. But still, personality, resolute, bam. Determination is very good. Leadership will be good. Work rate between 11 and 14. I can more than live with that. And since he is a number 10 position so far, um, passing. Okay, vision between 10 and 14 and technique between 12 and 15. I would say that this is a very interesting prospect. I don't know why this keeps changing, by the way, because if I simply click it, it goes back to my view. Um, but yeah, second guy, Anthony Roussel, also from Cannes, same club. We don't know the personality yet, so maybe worth scouting more. But he is a right wing back and same thing, determination pretty high, tackling is more than okay, long throws, nice. Now one thing I would like to mention already is read the scouting report because you can just, and I used to do it too, I, I'm the first to admit it, do not just look at the star ratings because they may be deceiving, they will probably give you somewhat of an indication. I'm not saying that, but read, if you have a more detailed report, if you keep scouting this guy, read the damn report because it could be very, very misleading to just look at the star ratings. Trust me, I have missed out on some good players by doing just that. 
Now, as far as other filters go, I think the most obvious one is media description because, and I'm not gonna have it here because I didn't scout them enough, but if you see any media descriptions starting with the word promising, ding, ding, ding. That's a very good sign and will most likely mean that they have a bright future ahead of them. I can tell you for sure if the um, personality is involved in that description, if that is taken into account. I am not really sure about that. But just know if you see the word promising, for the love of God, scout that guy until there is nothing left to scout about him. Another good indication for Wonder Kids is if you have a player, for example, FC Chambly, who are a French national side, should that player, I don't know where he is now because this screen keeps changing, but should, or there he is, should Yuan Thomas be wanted by, I don't know, Lyon, Paris Saint-Germain, whatever big club in France you can think of, ding, 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 that is a very decent indication that that could be a potential wonder kid. I have signed players, and I'm not even joking, purely based on that. Well, not purely. If I see that their determination is not less than 10 and their personality is not whatever starts with un, I don't see any, any issues if I can afford it. Uh, to simply have that as a trigger if they are wanted by Man City, count me in. So guys, to summarize, at the end of each month, you go to that youth intake screen in the World Transfers tab, copy them to a short list. If you can see their determination already and, the, and it is low, you can, you can define what low means to you, but delete them immediately from the short list, scout the ones you want to scout, and if you get more information about them, such as there is personality and media description. For the love of God, take that personality into account. And if the media description starts with promising or and that player is wanted by a big club, you are pretty much set. Now, as a result of this all, and I know it's a lot of work, but let me just show you a couple of players that I have found by doing it exactly like this. Def Center, please. First of all, Lazar Jeremic. He just joined us, I think. Already injured. Bueno. Um, but he is a midfielder. He is 18 years old. He doesn't have a media description promising, I know. But I simply signed him because I saw Technique 15, Determination 14, which is okay. He has a balanced personality, which is not great, but it's not bad. But I mean, his physicals are really good, man. And he had those when he was 16, I think. Stamina 16, Balance, Agility, Acceleration. Right up there, Decisions, which is also very good as a central midfielder. Just one of the examples, and I signed him for not even half a million from Radniki in Serbia. The second guy I really want to show you is Giacomo Damico. He is 17 years old now, but I did sign him when he was 15 from Sampdoria in Italy for 1 million. And I know if you are a non-league club, you don't have a million pounds to spend. But that's not the point here. I would have never found this guy and been able to sign him for 1 million if I hadn't used the technique that I've just shown you. So, 17 years old, he is basically fit to function in my first team at Stuttgart at this point. His mentals are insanity. I don't think I have ever seen anything like this in a 17 year old, and I'm not even kidding. He's an enthusiastic striker, is his media description. So if you see that, ding, ding, ding. Professional personality, 18 determination, and I mean, this, if this is not going to be a wonder kid in two years, I don't know who will. One last thing I want to mention, guys, and this goes for either the uh, youth intake shortlist and the free agent shortlist. Of course, if you have a lot of guys on those lists, chances are you will get some spam in your inbox and your social feed. What I tend to do is simply select everyone if you, of course, don't want to get that, if you want to get that spam, the video basically ends here. 
But if you want to avoid that spam, you can right click on all those and say unfollow all. Or you can also go to inbox social feed. And then all the way at the bottom here is manage. And here you can choose following and you can choose players, whatever. You can also choose shortlists, all shortlists or player shortlists. It doesn't even matter. And then, for example, we have the youth intake shortlist. And if you click on this little pencil here, you can simply untick everything, confirm, and now you won't be notified, notified even about anything concerning any of those players. Thank me later. So guys, I think that is about everything I want to tell you. If you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section. I know it's maybe some of the things are pretty obvious, but I think there are some tips and tricks in there that could really make your football manager life a lot easier. I really thank you for watching. And if you have enjoyed the episode, feel free to show me some support by liking the video. And if you like this kind of content, bang on the notification button after you have subscribed to my channel, because then you won't miss a single thing. Thanks again for watching, guys. Use the comment section for your questions, and I hope to see you very soon.